getting back into Elden Ring over the past week or so, perfecting my build, getting ready for the release of the DLC, The Shadow of the Earth Tree, I had a sneaky feeling that From Software would drop a day one patch. I was hoping that this day one patch wouldn't include any nerfs to my build in particular. I've got the patch notes on screen now guys, we're going to read through it fresh. I apologise in advance if I make a mistake in anything in regards to uh, not remembering certain features. I've, it's been over a year since I last played this game. Been absolutely highly anticipating this uh, DLC release. It comes out later on today, I cannot wait. Today we're getting to the day one patch. And I am a little nervous. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like it really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so this is patch version 1.12. Uh, targeted platforms, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and Steam. Okay, so new features. Added support for the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. Obvious. Five new hairstyles have been added into the game. They can be selected during uh, character creation, using the clouded mirror stand, and using Renelia's rebirth feature. Cool. Added map functions menu to the map menu. Nice. New summoning pool features. Active summoning pools will now be carried over to New Game Plus. Individual summoning pools can now be enabled disabled in a newly added map functions menu. If includes distant areas is selected when using the small golden effigy, summoning pools within a Demogwon Palace will not be selected for summoning, even if you have activated them. If you are within a Demogwon Palace and select nearby only when using the small golden effigy, you will be able to be summoned within the area. Cool. Okay, so new inventory features. Newly obtained items will be marked with... Oh, that's pretty cool then. Uh, I hated this before. When you got a new weapon, you're going through all your weapons and you cannot remember which one you unlocked. That's a pretty cool feature. A new tab called Recent Items has been added to review recently obtained items. Gets even better, people. Display settings can be changed from the display tab in the system menu. Added new feature to summon Spectral Steed uh, during the Elden Beast. The boss... What? Really? That is incredible. You can summon your man, guys, in the Elden Beast boss battle. That's pretty cool. Added new feature to the Colosseum. Uh, crafted consumable items that have been used during a battle will be replenished at the end of your session. Pretty cool. Added support for Arabic language. Nice. Okay, so Steam only new features. New keyboard and mouse settings. Added a lock on change threshold a setting of mouse controls. Added a setting to change cursor movement behavior in the map menu. And added key assignments to open a map in the key settings menu. Okay, so that's cool for those PC players. We now move on to PvP exclusive balance adjustments. The adjustments in this section do not affect single player or cooperative play weapon adjustments now i apologize i haven't played pvp in an absolute while i don't know what's meta i don't know what's the goal to build i don't know what's what so i apologize in advance okay so after being affected by madness and or sleep status effects the status effect builder will be halted for a short period of time increase the poise damage of some attacks against other players of the following weapon types great swords colossal swords uh, curved great swords great axes hammers flails great hammers colossal weapons great spears and halberds okay so adjusted poise damage of some dual wielding attacks against other players by the following weapon types okay so great swords axes great axes hammers great hammers halberds and reapers Increased poise damage against other players from dual wielded attacks of the following weapon types. Axes, hammers, halberds and reapers. Increased poise damage of axes against other players. Decrease the damage of uh, dual wield attacks against other players of all weapon types. Decrease the poise damage of some attacks against other players of the following weapon types. Daggers, straight swords, thrusting swords, heavy thrusting swords, curved swords, katanas, twin blades, axes, spears, reapers, whips, fists and claws. Decrease the poise of value of some attack motions against other players of the following weapon types. Great swords, colossal swords, curved great swords, great axes, hammers, 
flails, uh, great hammers, colossal weapons, great spears and halberds. Okay, so decrease the damage of some attacks against other players for the heavy thrusting sword weapon type. Decrease the damage of dual wield attacks against other players for the following weapon types, spears and great spears. And decrease the damage animation motion of the following weapon types when another player is stunned by a two-handed heavy running attack, fists and claws. Okay, so decrease the effects of the Baldashins, I believe that's pronounced blessing, and the radiant version to increase the poise value and physical damage negation in PvP. Okay, so we're going to move on to skill adjustments and just quickly looking at this guys, I'm seeing many, many nerfs, yeah? Spinning slash, decreased damage. Flaming strike, decreased damage. Rain of arrows, decreased damage and poise damage. Cursed blood slash, decreased damage. Transient moonlight, decreased damage. Lightning, lightning storm? Is that not Thunderstorm? I don't know. Is that something new? Since I last played, I'm not sure. But hey, Lightning Storm, it states decreased poise damage. Uh, spear Core Ritual, decreased poise damage. Ancient Lightning Spear, decreased damage. Redan's Rain, decreased damage and poise damage. And Spinning Weapon, decreased damage, animation, motion, and stunning other players. So that is a lot of nerfs there, guys. And a lot of damage takeaways for sure. Okay, so we move on to incantation adjustments. Okay, so black flames protection, decreased physical block rate and the bestial sling, decreased poise damage. There's a lot of poise damage and nerfs being hit with this day one patch uh, within Shadow of the Earth Tree. Craziness. So there's many uh, changes there for PvP. Again, I'm so far off it with PvP. I haven't got a clue what's going down here. So yeah, let me know if this is good or bad down below. Okay, so general balance adjustments. The adjustments in this section affect both PvE and PvP aspects of the game. Adjusted turning speed when using the dual wielded heavy thrusting swords. Increased dexterity scaling when assigning Ashes of War with corresponding weapon affinities. Increased stamina consumption when guarding against attacks of the following weapon types. Great swords, curved swords, great axes and great hammers. Increase the speed of some attacks of the following weapon types. Axes, great axes, hammers, flails and reapers. Increase the damage of charge attacks of the following weapon types, axes, great axes and some colossal weapons. Increase the turning speed of normal attacks of the reaper's weapon type, pretty cool. Increased damage of the whip's weapon type, except the ulmi whip, cool. Uh, increase the speed of consecutive attacks for the following weapon types, light balls and long balls. Increase the poise damage of the torch's weapon type, also actually poise damage here gets a buff. So that's one good poise damage change there. Increase the duration of the effect of Morg's Great Rune. Increase the duration of the effect of Morg's Great Rune that increases the attack power when a bleeding status effect is triggered by a nearby summoned spirit. Decrease the heal amount reduction from the Flask of Crimson Tears and increase the heal on attack effect when using Millennia's Great Rune. Okay, that's not a bad change. Increase the attack power of arrows, great arrows, bolts, great bolts that can be crafted through item crafting. Uh, decrease the turning speed of dual wielded weapons for the following weapon types, spears and great spears. And decrease poise generation speed during some attacks of the following weapon types, great spears and halberd spears. Decrease the effect that increases the power of spells of Terra Magica and decrease the effect duration of the cerulean hidden tier man there's so many changes and nerfs here it's unbelievable okay so armament adjustments troll knight sword increased damage nice zamar's curved sword increased damage increased movement distance of some attacks Forked Hatchet, increased damage. Ripper Blade, decreased the status build up enhancement that scales with the Arcane Attribute. Serpent Hunter, uh, actually love this weapon, increased the speed of crouching attacks. Ripple Crescent Halberd, decreased the status build up enhancement that scales with the Arcane Attribute. The Albaniric Staff, increased attribute scaling. The Jalmir Glintstone Staff, increased attribute scaling. Then we have the Price of Death Staff, increased attribute scaling. Golden Order Seal, Increased attribute scaling, the claw mark seal, increased attribute scaling, and again with the dragon communion seal, increased attribute scaling. So now on to skill adjustments. Kick, increase the poison amount when using this skill. 
Spinning Slash, decrease the stats build up of your weapon when using this skill, Storm Assault, decrease the poise generation speed, uh, Storm Caller, decrease the poise generation speed, Storm Stomp, decrease poise generation speed, Glint Blade Phalanx, decrease poise damage, Loretta Slash, again decrease the poise generation speed, same for Bloody Slash. Uh, with the strong shot, increase the speed of some attacks. Uh, sky shot, increase the speed uh, when doing consecutive attacks. Enhanced shot, increase the speed of some attacks. Parry, increase parry hitbox generation speed. Storm wall, increase parry hitbox generation speed. Uh, Fox barrier, again, increase parry hitbox generation speed. The buckler parry, added attack recovery time after using the skill. Taker's flames, decrease the fire's poise damage. Recovered the fire's knocking down effect. Moonlight Greatsword. Increased the poise damage of heavy and charged attacks, but decreased the poise damage of the generic magic wave. The Thundercloud Form. Decreased poise damage. Magma Shower. Decreased the poise generation speed. Thunderstorm. Decreased damage. Bubble Shower. Decreased damage and poise damage. I command thy Neil. Increase the poise value during the active part of the skill. Decreased the poise generation speed. Bloodborne Ritual, uh, decrease the generation status buildup, lower a slash, decrease the poise generation speed, bear witness, increase damage and poise damage, and contagious fury, uh, decrease the amount of attack power generated by the skill. Man on oh man reading all that is difficult because there's so many nerfs going on here, it's unbelievable. Okay, so moving on to the last two categories now, guys. And first up, we have bug fixes. Uh, these are just general bugs that they have fixed and have been rolled out within this day one patch. If you want to pause the video and check out a bug you've experienced, see if it's been changed or fixed, pause the video now and read through these. And lastly, we have Steam only adjustments. And again, if you want to pause the video and read through these, be my guess but there we have it guys the latest patch for Elden Ring many 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 changes in regards to weapons uh, poise took a massive hit so yeah what do you think patch notes version 1.12 done and dusted guys if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out if you feel like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys I will see you on that next one